there. So welcome to a kind of overview of my DIY CNC machine. Uh, just documenting the existence of this thing. Um, it was definitely a kind of a Mach 1, Mach 2 kind of build. Uh, this is ultimately all built on a platform for mobility sake and everything involved in this build is open source. So we have the Raspberry Pi running Raspbian, um, its own operating system. Uh, and then that is linked to an Arduino, which the Arduino is running an open source uh, firmware called Gerbil, which can drive CNC motors. Uh, we have the X motor, which is then doubled on the A driver slot on the shield here. And then we have Y which is this direction, and then we have Z, which is this direction. So that's all four motors used. Um, everything is pretty modular, but uh, given that this is Mach 2, I rearranged things. So the brains of the unit sits here with a uh, USB stick doing most of the file transfers between Eagle PCB software, um, Flatcam, which helps to translate uh, a PCB design into XYZ cutting movements. And then um, I've got the controls back here, which I can all operate with one in my right hand, which is spindle speed. I can shut off the motors if necessary. And then I've got spindle power on a switch. Uh, two power supplies here, which offer plenty of amperage for the uh, needed movement of motors and spindles. And I've got the AC inputs coming here, uh, which uses two power adapters to get power, DC power to everything where it belongs. Even the design of the um, CNC machine is open source found on Thingiverse. I've adapted it to my own needs. Mach 1, I wasn't patient enough and I basically just printed out this assembly which was uh, took 28 hours to print so you can see why my patience was kind of limited um, and I used uh, my own version of holding the rails and motors but that proved not as uh, reliable as I would have liked. I got some good results in the beginning but over time this head started to bend and um, you know, you need a nice 90 degree angle in order to get accurate cuts on a single sided PCB. And while we're speaking of those, that's what I use for this machine. Copper clad PCBs, single sided. I use a uh, 0.2 millimeter tipped 30 degree angle cutting bit for the traces. I use a anywhere from 0.3 to 1.2 millimeter drill bits for cutting the through holes because I use through hole components not surface mount in most of my designs and this is the end mill bit which is responsible for cutting out the profile of the final PCB after it has been traced and uh, through hold. Um, I do tool changes with a combination of three tools which is two pliers and a hex bit. Ultimately I just release these two here uh, and then I'm able to remove the spindle and then of course these two help to hold things still while I take tools out and change them out. A um, lot of reliability with Mach 2 here. I've seen some great results. Really clean PCBs using sharp tools is also important but um, I've seen some definitely uh, the kind of results I would like to see in my own prototyping. Um, and this really is great. It's For me, it's better than etching because I don't have to deal with uh, chemicals and it all fits on one platform. It's important to note that I am a coordinator of a makerspace, so I do have access to a lot of bits, bobs, and leftover parts. All the things here that um, were used for the movement are taken from a bunch of dead 3D printers in 3D printer graveyard. They've seen their life span uh, through and through and I used their parts to create something new. So that's, um, that's that. You'll note there's only a numeric keypad and a mouse for entry. In Mach 1 I realized I wasn't really using the alpha keys on a very uh, long keyboard that sat here. So instead I cut that down to just a numpad because basically we're just putting in um, variables and uh, speed kind of numbers for that for input and the mouse helps to navigate the software. Some challenges I found during this build were stop switches. Uh, I sought to home the machine with micro switches that activated when 
uh, we were at the top of X, we were in the back left, back of Y, and we were in the back left of X. However, um, those switches are really sensitive to EMF, and I attempted to use uh, ferrite boxes. Uh, these are ferrite cores which are meant to cut down on um, transient EMF from the AC motors, the AC signals that go to the motors, but it wasn't good enough and I got false triggers all the time, so I ended up just not homing the machine at all, placing the head at the XY coordinate I needed, creating that as a zero point, and zero basically became home. The original plan for this, um, as found on Thingiverse, suggests multiple different lengths of uh, threaded rod and regular aluminum profile rod, but in trying to uh, create something out of old 3D printer parts, I was pretty much stuck with um, what came from a couple old Ultimaker machines, and the length of those shafts was set, as well as the threaded shaft, which goes into the AC motor directly. It's not coupled with a coupler. Um, so in, you, in trying to, you know, upcycle, I suppose you'd call it, uh, the build area is rather limited, but it's good enough for my, uh, the devices I make. Certainly I've never really needed to make a PCB in my work um, greater than this build area of approximately, you know, nine inches by nine inches. So with that comes uh, really no limitation on my work. Um, I think that this smaller build plate is suitable for uh, PCB milling, which uh, I think the original plans, you know, maybe suggest that you're trying to do uh, wood milling or uh, routing of various other materials like aluminum, but with PCBs it's quite ample. So I hope you enjoy this overview of my DIY, DIY CNC machine. Um, I'm going to post some other video footage that shows some projects that I've completed with this. I'll link all of the uh, resources in the description and um, yeah maybe write a little bit about it as well so thanks for watching